Hi friends, welcome once again. Let's, let's bring this to a close, at least for this particular session. So we're continuing from where we left of the alternative approach to the financial, uh, consolidated financial statement. And again, our focus is on the statement of financial position. Okay, so we are going to be looking at this last segment of the of the mechanics, of the standard mechanics. Okay, so we'll continue from where we left off. We continue from where we left off. So the part A looked at the various elements in terms of uh, consolidation starting from um, principally starting from from uh, the reserves okay the consolidation process and then the reserves the group reserves we're going to be continuing from the non-controlling interest component an alternative approach that we would use okay and then we can wrap it up over there okay we can wrap it up over there good so the non-controlling interest portion okay <clears throat> All right. So NCI, we'll, there are situations where we will not control everything. We will not acquire every every ordinary share of the of the subsidiary, but we we'll have some other guys on the on the other end who will also control a portion of it. So perhaps the parent company owns seventy five, and then the twenty five belongs to others who are not part of the group company. Okay. So we call them the non controlling interest. Okay. The the twenty five percent. We call them non-controlling interest. Gone were the days when they were referred to as the minority interest. Okay. But over time, as the standard kept updating, they thought it best to call it um, non-controlling interest, no longer minority interest. Okay. So we must always create a separate line for the non-controlling interest as part of the equity. Okay. So how do we identify the pro forma? How do we work it out? And it doesn't change from the earlier standard um, procedure that I showed to you, the SCCA Kaplan format. It doesn't change. The same format is here. So we look at the NCI at acquisition. We could get it from the goodwill calculation. Sometimes we find the fair value easily stated in the question. Okay, sometimes we'll be asked to identify, to calculate it, where we know the percentage holding, the proportionate holding of the of the NCI, okay. So maybe they own they own twenty five percent times the ordinary shares, given the market value or the current share price. We can easily find the fair value of this at acquisition. Okay, we can find it, and then we add the NCI's percentage share of any post acquisition reserves, any post acquisition reserves. We add it, and then we also, if there are any, so we add this. Okay. I was, I was, when you look at this carefully, it looks like plus this and plus this. No. So we add these elements, all right, any post-acquisition reserves. Again, if the post-acquisition reserves were, is a loss, then we subtract, okay? And then we rather less the, the percentage share of goodwill impairment, okay? Then the net effect is what we find as the NCI, which we transfer into the group the group's uh, statement of financial position okay let's take an example the parent owns 80 percent it means the nci owns what 20 percent okay the nci's portion is 20 percent at the date of acquisition the the b had reserves at the date of acquisition pre-acquisition profits or um, retained earnings at acquisition is, is fifty thousand. at the current date company a had reserves of 220, that's the parent, okay? Had 220 reserves and company B had 180. So you realize that there has been a change between this and that, okay? There's a post acquisition of what, 130. There's a post acquisition of 130. The company A's policy is to value NCI at the fair values. At acquisition, company B's shares were trading at five per share. The total share capital of B is 100. Okay, we need to value the NCI at the fair value. Remember, we look at this in the earlier scenario where you've been asked to 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 analyze. Okay, to compute the NCI's fair value. Okay, so remember, it's 20 percent. The shares, the equity shares of Company B, the one we are owning, is what 100. Okay, and then we look at the market, the trading as five. Okay. 
So we'll go on to compute the, the reserves. Reserves very easy to work. So like I said, it is not cast in stone. This is not a straight jacket approach where you decide to work goodwill first or you come to work the NCI second, the group reserves as fifth. No. Choose and pick which one you think will, will, you can easily work. If you want to set out the performance so that once you get here, you plug them in, you leave the space, you continue with this side, you come back, you fill in the gaps, that's your choice. Okay, just make sure you can at least cover as much grounds as possible in any examination. So the reserves at acquisition for the parent company, we recognize everything. But for the subsidiary, again, at the date of the reporting date is 180, the total. But at acquisition, we're looking at only that of the subsidiary is 50. There were no fair value adjustments in this scenario, so it is nil. It tells us that we have a post-acquisition reserve of 130. I think I highlighted it here of 130, okay? Now, this 130, we, the parent, will only take 80%, right? And then the 20% goes to the NCI. The 20% goes to the NCI. So 80% of this 130 gives us 104. Top it up to the total reserves of the parents and we get 32 for this quote we transfer into the statement of financial position for the group for the parents okay all right we move on now the nci the nci valuation the nci valuation okay um so we are we're told that the share capital of the company we acquired the subsidiary is 100 okay this translates simply to 100,000 shares valued at the power value of one okay okay power value at one if you look at the acc example we cited you will see that clearly the question will tell you that it is what a one hundred thousand one dollar power value ordinary shares okay so in an exam in the question we will clearly make this we we'll make this clearly so that you don't assume okay so that you don't assume we make it clearly so that you don't assume you find it on the face company has purchased 80 of these which is for the parent right and then the non-controlling is 20. so simply and we have looked at this example in the scca um, format which syncs which which um, synchronizes with this okay so it is simply the 20 percent for the nci times the share okay the hundred thousand shares times the market value of the share price okay so the share price the current share price of what um five right from the question of five so simply we have twenty thousand okay times the twenty percent of the hundred times twenty thousand times the share, share value the current share price of hundred so the nci becomes an um, hundred thousand at fair value okay based on this whatever we have as the nci we add their share of the what of the post acquisition reserves okay of the subsidiaries post acquisition reserves post acquisition reserves we add it and if there is any impairment to goodwill we subtract it okay any impairment to goodwill their portion only their portion of the impairment the 20 percent we subtract it so now let's work the nci this hundred thousand, okay. Their percentage share, okay. Remember, we we'll take let's take one step back. Remember, it was one hundred and thirty, okay. This one hundred and thirty is the post acquisition reserves, the 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 retained earnings after acquisition, okay, the, or the profit after acquisition. So the hundred and thirty, the subsidiary takes twenty percent, which translates to twenty six thousand, okay. So the subsidiary is twenty percent here translates to 26,000 and this is what we are going to add to the subsidiaries um, value okay their fair value so that is the fair value we computed is a 26 we add there's no impairment otherwise they would have taken their portion the 20 percent of the impairment of the goodwill at the end of the day if there's any impairment we subtract it okay we would have subtracted it but there's none so we leave it as it is so we get 126 as the NCI's portion, which will represent as other equity in the statement of financial position. Okay, quite easy, very easy. Now let's take a fully worked example, which talks includes the goodwill, the reserves, 
the NCI, and then the simple addition and subtraction and wrap it up, okay? All right, so this is a full example. The parent acquired 80%, which means the NCI's portion is 20%, right? The parent acquired it and paid 13.8. That at the time when they acquired it, the reserves of the subsidiary was 9.1, pre-acquisition reserves, okay? At the date of acquisition, the fair value of assets of the subsidiary were equal to the carrying amount, with the exception of the following items. These following items had values that exceeded the current amount. They had values that exceeded the current amount. Fair value adjustment. Inventory had 300,000 excess. Plant had 10 uh, excess of 1.2 with a 10 year remaining life. We were told that the inventory was sold by the subsidiary before the year end, which makes it interesting to analyze. If it has been fully sold, do we have to worry our head about it? Do we have to? Okay, now let's look at it. Let's move on. The non-controlling interest in S is to be valued at its fair value of 3.2. So we've been given the NCI fair value, 3.2. No need for us to calculate. They've given it to us. Prepare the consolidated statement of financial position for the company as at 31st December 2015. The year starts at 2015 January and ends on 31st December, so one year. There's no prorata, exactly one year. We're also given the detailed financial statement, the financial position of the subsidiary and the parent, okay? We know easily we could add this, but remember, there's a fair value adjustment here. So yes, you could add, but let's go on to see what the fair value would be, okay? That's what we're saying that remember to look at both sides before you run the, the, the analysis. We were told that the investment in S is 13800 I'll go back and check the question. They said yes, we bought it for 18, 13800 So it tells us that everything here relates to the investment that we invested in the subsidiary. And we are going to easily knock this off against what? The share capital of the company in, that we acquired, okay? Inventory, 2,900. Subsidiary is 1,200. But remember, they said inventory for the subsidiary then had an XX 300,000 in terms of fair value adjustment, which we need to look at, okay? But the whole of inventory was sold, okay? Trade receivables, nothing is said so easily. I can add this to make my life easy for me and keep it somewhere. Cash and bank, nothing was said so I can add it. There's no trans transfer of cash. Not yet. We'll look at this later on. Share capital, like I said, we'll knock it off against our investment. We'll only keep this guy uh, for that of the parent. The reserves, we need this, yes, but we've also been told that at the time when we acquired a subsidiary, their reserves was 9.1. Today, at the reporting date, their reserves is now 10.6. What is the excess? Okay, so the, the, the 10.6. 10,600, 10,600, and 9,100, okay? It tells you we have some 1,500 excess, okay, as post-acquisition reserves. For the borrowing, we just add it up. And payables, we add it up. So the ones I can easily add them up, I add them up so that it will save me the time. We move on. The steps. Remove the parent subsidiary. I've just done it along the line. That's investment from the parent and the parent share capital of the subsidiary. The ones you can add, assets and liabilities, add them. Fair value adjustment, we'll look at them. Let's look at any goodwill arising. Consolidated figure in terms of the reserves and what goes to the NCI. We compute the NCI fully and then we wrap up our computations. Okay, so this is the first step I did. Cancel them off. Life is easy, okay? The next step, add the ones you can add for now and keep it hanging. Don't, don't finish it up yet, okay? So add the ones you can add. Um, the ones you can add, still add them and keep it hanging for now. Just keep it ha hanging. The ones we need to add, keep it hanging, okay? So we add this to that, to this, to that, okay? And then for the share capital, of course, that of the parents and keep it hanging, okay? Don't finish it up yet. Let's see where the adjustments need to be before we wrap it up. Now, 
the fair value adjustment. At acquisition, we were told that inventory had an increase of 300 above the, the current value. And then plant, plant and equipment, property plant and equipment, one 200 above the face value. But there is a change. There is something which happened during the period of the year. The whole of the 300 was sold. So knock it off. The net effect is zero. What about the acquisition? <clears throat> the, 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 the plant at acquisition. We were told that it has a useful life of what? 10 years. So our 1,200, okay, that 1 1.2 million divided by, by the 10 years, okay, gives us our 120, okay, 120,000 actually. So that's the 120,000, which we need to adjust out, okay. The remaining elements, when we add these two, the fair value adjustment, the 1,500, we need to add it, we need to include it in the identifiable net assets of the subsidiary, which will help us during the calculation of our goodwill, okay. So we need to send these into that identifiable net assets of the subsidiary, okay. So we can add in the information from the above. Um, depreciation, like I said, we got it as 120, okay, which we have just plotted it here as a change, okay, as a change. Now let's move on. Again, the fair value adjustments, okay, so the same thing we've done over there. So what we just did is just what we've wrapped, there. we wrapped it up here. So nothing stands here. The net effect at reporting date will be 1080, which we need to adjust to the property plant and equipment, okay. And then, um, so this goes to the to the statement of financial position and this change the drop the changes the drops okay will then lead towards um we take it to the reserves how do we do it we subtract them these are reductions we subtract them okay because this one had moved out of the system we get rid of it otherwise you'll be double counting it you'll be double counting it okay now we move on to to finish up what we're supposed to do so you realize that in the first instance, we added the property, plant, and equipment of the parent and the subsidiary. And I said, leave it hanging. After you've done the adjustment to the fair value, the net effect of the fair value, we need to add it back. We need to add it back. Okay, then we got our answer. But the inventory, remember that we sold everything. If we had not sold everything, we would have adjusted it here. We would have added it back. But we sold everything, so there's no need to touch this inventory. Okay, trade receivables, nothing is said. Cash, nothing is said. Parent only for the share capital. Um, we, you realize that we have left the reserve hanging for now because we need to adjust it. We need to do a lot of work on that one. Long-term borrowings and payables, we keep them. Okay, now we move on. What about the goodwill? How much did we pay as fair value of the consideration paid? It is 18, 13,800, okay? Now, the non-controlling interest at acquisition, we add it, okay? We add the non-controlling interest at acquisition. And this was clearly given in the questions, okay? So we add because it is per the question. It is given in the question, okay? You can see per question, which is 3,200. We then list the share capital, okay? Always we include it as part of the identifiable net assets of the subsidiary. And then the retained earnings at acquisition, 9100 okay? And then the fair value adjustments, the fair value adjustments, which we decided, which we realized was higher. You know, if you don't include it here, what we, you are going to be saying is that you are actually understating the assets of the company. They are telling that the assets actually, what you find on the book value, is not real. The value as are higher. So the revaluation which has been done, please include it as part of the assets of the subsidiary, okay? Be prudent enough to add it, okay? And uh, use a prudent concept. So we, we, we add it all and we get a total of 13,000, subtract it from the sum of the consideration paid and the NCI value, and we get 4,000. So this is a goodwill. Is there any impairment? The question was silent. No impairment, okay? We kept it. Now we move on. So you can see the goodwill is concluded. Number uh, we got four thousand, right? Inventory. I think we should. We can even wrap it up over there. 
trade receivables, cash, we can wrap it up, okay? Parents, I think we can still wrap it up, okay? Reserves, still hanging. Let's go and work the reserves and come back to wrap it up. So on the, in the reserves, the total value for that of the subsidy for the parent is 54100 At the reporting date, the total value for the subsidiary is 10600 Now, at acquisition, what was the what was the reserves of the subsidiary? 9100 Subtract it. And again, was there any fair value adjustments? We need to knock them off. Okay. You remember the 300 for the for the inventory, which was totally sold out. And then the 120 depreciation of the assets, which was also something we knocked off. We need to subtract these, okay, from the reserves of the subsidiary. Then we get 1080. Of this 1080, 20% goes toward the NCI. And then 80% goes to the parents. So 80% of these, okay, will give us 864. Okay, let me cross check and see, just to be sure. 1080 times 0 0.8, okay, gives us 864. Perfect, okay, 864, perfect. So that is it. We add a 54,100 to 864, and we get the total reserves for the parent that will need to be recognized on the face of the statement of financial position. Okay, we now have to send this 20% um, of the 1080, okay, minus 1080. So 20% of the 1080, NCI's value is what? 216. 216. 216. Okay, now we move on. Go to the figures again, the financial statement. I'm sure we are done with this. We can easily wrap it up. Goodwill is done. Inventory is done. Nothing more. In, um, receivables, cash, parents, component of share only. Share capital for parents only. And then the reserves, which we have already computed, we just worked. Long-term borrowings and trade payables, we can easily sum them up. Now, let's work the NCI. At acquisition, the NCI's value was given. No need to say NCI percentage, okay? NCI fair value at acquisition is 3,200. Okay, it's 3200. We then add, I will not, if you think this will confuse you, you can leave this one and simply say you add, okay, add the NCI's portion of the post acquisition reserves, okay, which gives us 216. And then you less, you less any NCI percentage of goodwill impairment. The question didn't give us any goodwill impairment, so it will still be zero. Otherwise, we would have subtracted. We add this and we get 3416. This is what we represent as other component of equity on the face of the financial statement, um, the statement of financial position. Okay. All right. As NCI. Then we finish up. Then we finish up. Okay. So the NCI is given. Reserves is given. Um, goodwill is given. What else have we left? The fair value adjustment is given. We are done. We are done. Wrap up your calculations. Wrap up your calculations and you end up realizing that your total assets will jive with your total equity and liabilities. Nothing complicated. So easy. Very, very easy. Okay. So remember the step-by-step -step approach. Okay. Add the ones you need to add. Determine the structure. Removing, remove the investment from the parent's financial statement and knock it off against the share capital of the subsidiary. Okay, look at the impact of fair value adjustments. Calculate your goodwill. Calculate your NCI. Calculate the group reserves, consolidated reserves. Wrap up your calculations. Very easy. And you are done. Once again, study the course text. Attempt practice more examples. Read IFRS 10, IFRS 3, like I've said. See what professional bodies have said about this standard once again. I put the same thing in the earlier slides. Read our cap plan text, ACC, the core text, um, chapter 17 and chapter 18, okay? And then we will be good to go. Good. Good job, everyone. So this is where we will pull down the curtains for the second week in terms of the basics, the basic mechanics of, uh, of consolidated financial statement or consolidated statement of financial position. We'll be looking at statement, consolidated income statements, 
quite easy. Just a little technicality somewhere, but that one is usually pretty for straightforward. Okay, friends, thanks for your time, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye for now.